Hello. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Am I supposed to wait? Nah, this is great. I thought, you, I thought you were saying hello to me. I know you're doing an introduction to the listeners. Well, I think that's the better, best introduction that could have happened. So welcome back to Attic Antics with Mr. Bristol. Hey, everybody. Or Troy, for those that know him. Let's see. Um, Mr. Bristol, I see about uh, six, six Disney posters in this room. Then there's a couple that are, that are folded up. Um, all right, so on the board, there are, there's a Cars 2 poster, a Monsters University poster, an Inside Out poster, the Good Dinosaur poster, Finding Dory poster, and an Incredibles 2 poster. Of those movies that you have to look at every day for some reason, which one's the best? So just a quick, just a quick clarification. Although those are, yes, Disney posters, those are all specifically Pixar posters. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So Pixar is... We're talking about Pixar. Talking about Pixar. I like Disney in general. I like all of the movies. I saw Frozen 2 in theaters, of course. Um, of course. For the most part, I'm into it. But Pixar is really where I'm, I'm super geeked out. Um, so of those six, it should be noted that those six aren't any particular six. Those are a random six. It's not like I chose my six favorite Pixar movies and put them up. Those are a random six. And the story of how those posters actually got up there uh, is interesting. I talk about Pixar way more than I should in class, probably more than I talk about U.S. history. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a couple of my students were at like a coding conference or competition or something like that. And there was, it was hosted by Pixar, so there's a bunch of like Pixar posters that they were like, take these for free. So they just got them and brought them to me, and so now they're up on my wall. So uh, one of those six is Cars 2 which is, uh, as most people who know me know, the only Pixar movie that I consider to be a bad movie. I think Cars 2 is a genuinely bad movie, but it is on my wall. So again, that doesn't necessarily showcase my favorite six, but of those six, Cars 2, which is trash, Monsters University, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, Finding Dory, Incredibles 2, the best of those is definitely Inside Out. I think Inside Out is probably one of the top two, maybe top three Pixar movies. Of the 20 Pixar movies that have been released, I would say Inside Out is definitely top two or three. Maybe, 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 well, yeah, top two or three. Dope. Yeah. Can you explain your ranking system for the Pixar movies? For Pixar? Okay, so, yeah. so well, the way I think about Pixar is the way that I think about, you know, or a lot of people think about, you know, like some of the, the greatest bands of all time, right? When, when you're talking about, you know, um, you know, like the Beatles, you're talking about something like that. There's no bad albums. So when you're saying, oh, this, you get into an argument with someone who's a fellow Beatles fan. You're like, oh, what's better, Abbey Road or, or uh, you know, the White Album or Sgt. Pepper or whatever. And it's like, you start to get into this conversation where you're like, oh, Sgt. Pepper sucks because it, no one, none of them actually suck. So it's all in context of, these are all great albums, but which is like the greatest and which is like really, really great, but not the greatest. And which one is like also pretty damn great, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way I think about Pixar. 19 of the 20 Pixar movies. The only one, as previously mentioned, which is just not good, is Cars 2. But what's so bad about Cars 2? Well, let me finish answering your first question. Okay. We'll circle for back sure, to Cars sure, 2. Sure. So I have basically an uh, uh, organization of Pixar movies, which are gold, silver, and bronze. They're all award winners, right? Mm -hmm. But gold, silver, and bronze. Um, and basically, uh, all of the 19 movies will go into one of those three categories. And the gold standard would be like your Toy Story, your Monsters, mm -hmm. Inc., your, um, you know, uh, Inside Out, Coco, you know, and, and a whole bunch of others. But just some real top-notch, amazing, classic, fantastic Pixar movies. And then the silver would be more, you know, maybe some of the sequels. Like, well, I would say, I would actually put Nemo. A lot of people really like Nemo. I put Nemo in the silver, which is controversial. Um, but some of the sequels, like Monsters University, that might even be in the bronze. Anyway, it, it kind of goes from there. And essentially what I do, and I haven't really gone through each movie and done this, but I've, I've thought about doing a podcast in which I just go through and evaluate each of the Pixar movies, not by myself, but with somebody else who's equally passionate about Pixar. Mm -hmm. And I started to develop a rubric, which is what, are, what, what makes Pixar so great? What makes Pixar movies so special? Like, what are the four or five things? And then kind of evaluating each from there. And one of them is clearly just how beautiful they are visually, like aesthetically, right? And so some movies may rank really high on the visual, aesthetically beautiful, but not so high on some of the other ones. Um, so some of the other ones are... 
they make you feel something or think about something differently than you did before, which is not mm -hmm. something that children's movies usually do. It's not something where you're like, wow, like this has changed the way I think or feel about something, right? Mm -hmm. And again, some of the movies do that better than others, right? Um, one of them is it's equally entertaining for children and adults. So one movie that I love is Wally. Mm -hmm. I love Wally. I think it's visually beautiful. I think it it really evokes a lot of deep thought about a lot of stuff, about the direction that our planet's going and the way that we treat it and the environment and so on and so forth. But that one ranks really low on being um, enjoyable for adults and kids because it's a children's movie where nobody talks for the first 45 minutes. And when I try to get my kids to watch it, they're like, we don't want to watch Wally. Like, it's super really? boring. Yeah. So I, I think loved, a lot of... I loved Wally. Well, you may have, but I think... And I'm not saying every kid hates it. I'm not I saying do. they despise it. But at most kids, if you give them the choice between Finding Dory or Wally, Finding Dory is fun because there's a cute fish that forgets... forgets <laughs> and Wally yeah, is yeah, more yeah. like... Uh, a commentary on how Amazon and our our lack of environmental concern is going to destroy our nation or our our our, our, our planet, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so uh, those three um, visually uh, pleasing. It makes you feel or think something differently than you did before, and it, uh, it it's equally uh, appealing and entertaining to adults and children. And I had some other ones that I had thought of too, but I don't um, I'm, like plot. I'm, I'm not thinking of them. Almost just plot. Well, yeah, I was going to say creativity. So I guess that could be tied with plot because that's the one where the highest ranking one for me for creativity is Monsters, Inc. Mm -hmm. To take a, an old-fashioned notion that kids are afraid of monsters coming out of their closet <laughs> so... and turn it into this whole thing where there's a whole monster world and they get their energy from children's screams, like, where, like <laughs> how we use oil, they use children's screams, oh and then have a whole, a whole story and a whole world just created off that one small little idea. That is, the mo to me, the most clever of all of the Pixar movies. And I would say Monsters, Inc. ranks, that's all, another gold one, ranks really high. I mean, that's equally entertaining for adults and kids. Absolutely. It makes you think about, that one's not really like a deep thought one mm -hmm. as much, but like it's, it's entertaining, it's visually pleasing, it's cool. So anyway, so those are the kind of the criteria upon which I, I base my judgment of Pixar movies. Why does Cars 2 suck? Yeah. It's just a bad movie, dude. What's bad about it's it? It's just boring, it's kitschy, it's... It's like, here's my completely unsubstantiated by any evidence theory. Okay. I have no evidence <laughs> to prove this theory whatsoever. Okay. But the relationship between Pixar and Disney has kind of evolved over time. Originally, they're two different companies, and then Disney took over, and then at different times, they've had Pixar's had more control, and Disney's had more control, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, again, not based on any any evidence whatsoever. I think Pixar was like, hey, we want to make a spy movie, like a James Bond type movie. <laughs> And then Disney was like, that's a cool idea, but make it with cars because it's our number one selling like merchandise thing and we want to make money off of it because that's what Disney thinks about. And Pixar's like, no, cars is its own thing. We want to do our own just a spot <laughs> movie. And then like Disney forced them to do it with cars. So Pixar intentionally made a trash movie uh, in order to just say, you know, in order to be kind of obstinate against Again, no evidence. That's a this, hell of a funny theory. Uh, and that's why it's so bad. It's a stupid movie. Dang. Cars 3 I like. A lot of people don't like Cars 3. I think Cars 3 was fine. And honestly, Cars 1 and 3, neither <laughs> of them I think rank in the gold. I don't even think the Cars franchise in general is You don't is think like, Cars, Cars 1 is not in the gold? No, I like game? Cars, but like I don't think it's a gold standard movie. Mm, okay. It's not a movie that makes you really think. I think I have a lot of weird biases because I like I grew up with these movies. Right, for like, sure. You and I are coming to these movies very differently, mm -hmm. of course. And Cars is... What was the first Pixar movie you, like, remember watching? I actually don't even know. For me, it was, it was Nemo, 100%. I watched that movie. Um, I had my parents, they had a little, like, you know the little, like, car DVD players? Right. Like, the little screen. It's, like, not yeah. a computer, but it looks yeah, like a yeah, computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that, and I took it with me when I was two. Everywhere I go, yeah. I would just have that. And Nemo I, on loop. I, and I watched Nemo on loop. on loop. I would watch it like a thousand times. That reminds me, I knew this girl in college who had in her dorm a, D, a, a small TV and a DVD player. And she had the movie Legally Blonde play 24-7. It would play and then when it ends, she would just play it over. Even when she wasn't in her dorm, she'd oh like go to God. class. It would just play. She was obsessed with Legally That's Blonde. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It's like two-year-old you, but she's in college. <laughs> That's insane. But what I was going to say is, um, you know, Toy Story 1 came out in 1999. Mm -hmm. 
I was 16. So I was at an age where, as a teenager, it's different now, but you're a teenager, you don't watch children's movies. Mm-hmm. Now I think a Pixar movie comes out, I can see a bunch of teenagers being like, yo, let's go see this Pixar movie. Yes. I would go watch Pixar movies right now if I didn't have kids, just with my wife, because I love them so much. And now I do have kids, so I, I, I don't have to be a creep that goes and watch children's movies without kids. Yeah, that's but, but now they make, they, they didn't used to do the thing where they're like, let's try to make this equally entertaining to adults as they do to kids. I think Shrek kind of broke the mold on that. It's not a Pixar movie, but Shrek really had a lot of stuff in there that was like really funny for adults that kids wouldn't get. <laughs> and so I think Pixar kind of picked up on that too. But 1999, when Toy Story came out, I wasn't like, yo, let's go see the Toy Story. Like I was 16, right? Mm-hmm. And then, so I think it took a while, probably until my brother had kids, right? And so my, my nephew so was born, until I started watching Pixar movies. Oh, for sure, okay. Because like there's nothing that would have drawn me there like there's no way to have known there's a there's a, a chunk of life i think for people to from when they're about like 12 or 13 and like i'm too old for children's movies to when they have kids where they, there's a whole just blank spot of they didn't see any of those children's movies again now i don't think that's going to be as much of an issue because children's movies are so good and so entertaining for anybody so if you're like 21 and in college you'd be like hey yo Let's go see Toy Story 4, man. Like, that's just something you would do. Yeah. But I don't think you'd be like, yo, let's go see Lion King. Even though it's clearly an amazing movie, I think if you were 16 when Lion King came out, you didn't go see it. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know either. I guess it's just, it just <laughs> depends on who you are. Yeah. So do you think, you think having kids has no influence on your love of Pixar movies? Oh, no, no, no. I think it has a massive influence on my love of Pixar movies. Okay. Uh, because there are certain Pixar movies where I like it, just because my kids like it. Like Brave? Mm-hmm. I don't think Brave is a very good movie. I think Brave mm-hmm. is I think Brave would be a great Disney princess movie. Yes. But it's not it doesn't fit any of the Pixar mold. It's very weird. It's not like it doesn't feel like other Pixar movies. Like it's the classic Disney princess one. And I so I don't like it for a Pixar movie. But there was about six months where my daughter was obsessed with it. She wanted to start doing archery so she could be like Merida, the whole thing. So now mm-hmm. I love that movie because my daughter loves that movie, I see, right? I, see. And I think that's part of Cars too. Like Cars also, not Cars 2. Is yeah. I'm not really crazy about the Cars franchise, but my son loves Lightning McQueen. So if he mm-hmm. wants to watch Lightning McQueen, like I'm down. Yeah, good job. Life is a highway. Oh my God. I want... Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> good soundtrack. But Pixar is just cool, man. Like, it's just, I love that it's a Bay Area company, right? Mm-hmm. That's in Emeryville. I love that they're, um, you know, that they are very self-aware. They put a lot of, like, Easter eggs in their movies and stuff where it's, like, it's true. you know, John Ratzenberger or whatever his name is, the guy that was in Cheers has been in every single yes, Pixar yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes he has, like, one line. I did And sometimes he's a bigger one. They always have, like, he's the, Mac. Uh, he's Mac, he's yeah. He's Yeti. And he's a uh, ham. He's ham. Yeah. He's dope. But even in, like, uh, Ratatouille, he's, like, a waiter that has, like, a French accent. So you wouldn't even recognize that he was oh, there, right? I didn't know yeah. that one. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, he's in every single one. I've been watching. And then they have the, the Pizza Planet truck in every single one. To the point that, like, okay, so how do you get a Pizza Planet truck in The Good Dinosaur? There's no cars, right? Yeah. So the very beginning of the movie, there's a there's the, the whole concept of The Good Dinosaur is what if the asteroid missed? Yeah. Which was a good concept that they totally... I mean, The Good Dinosaur is not a great movie. Mm-hmm. It was a cool concept that they kind of ruined. But um, but at the very beginning, they had the asteroid belt out there. And then if you, you barely notice, you kind of have to pause it. One of the asteroids is the Pizza Planet truck. Okay, and it just like flies <laughs> by. Same thing with Brave. Like, it's like Scotland in, like, you know, the 900s or whatever, supposedly. So how are you going to get a Pizza Planet truck in there? So the witch, who's a woodcarver, you see a brief thing of one of the things she carved was the Pizza Planet truck. So I just think it's cool that, like, I mean, like, they spend time thinking about those things, which I think is really cool. Callbacks, Easter eggs, all that jazz. I agree. Yeah. That's sick. It is sick. I love Pixar, dude. I love it. Pixar's some sick stuff. Love it, yeah. I'm a little, uh, they have two movies coming out next year. Mm -hmm. I'm a little skeptical of one that's called Onward. It's basically the concept of, like, there's all these, like, magical, mystical creatures, like unicorns and trolls and whatever. And it's basically, like, if you took all that and put it in the modern day. So, like, instead of unicorns being these majestic creatures, they're kind of more like raccoons. Like, there's this, in, like, the, in the ad, in the, in the, in the uh, what's it called? The thing that they show you? Trailer. Yeah, the trailer. 
they have like a bunch of unicorns eating trash out of garbage cans and someone's like shooting them away like get out of here you pass like whatever whatever oh my god so <laughs> it looks that one I'm nervous about it looks like the concept isn't quite there but I also mm-hmm. was nervous about Coco Coco is one of the best Pixar movies ever so mm-hmm. you know what are you gonna do god, they have another one coming out next year called Soul that looks really good Ooh, what's that about uh, it's about a dude who um, he's a musician like soul music and I don't know at what point in the movie, but probably pretty early on, he dies. And oh, so it's kind of about, that. like, his soul and, like, I don't know if he comes back to life or whatever. Like, obviously, I haven't seen the movie. But it's kind of just about, like, who you are and who you're meant to be and, like, your place on Earth and what you're meant to create. And, like, we shouldn't waste our life doing things that we don't, that don't give us joy. You know what I mean? We should, like, if we have passions, we should pursue them. All that stuff. So it seems like it's ripe for classic Pixar where you, like, walk away being like, yes. Like, this is, it's changed the way it's made, it's inspired me to do something. Mm. And it's a kid's movie! Crazy. Oof. Let me tell you a quick story about Inside Out. Because okay. Inside Out, I think, is the best example of this. Mm-hmm. So, Inside Out was the first movie my wife and I saw after our daughter was born. She was like two. We hadn't gone to the movies in like two years. Mm. And we left the daughter with grandma, and we're like, we're going to go to the movies, and we're going to go get, you know, dinner or whatever. And we went and saw Inside Out. I don't know if you've seen Inside Out, but the whole concept of it is basically like there's a girl who's the main character, but five different emotions mm-hmm. are also represented as characters like in her head and all that. And and she's moving to California from somewhere else. And she gets so upset that she eventually like runs away from home and she has this whole emotional freak out. And the whole thing is very beautifully done and it's really funny and all this other stuff. So... Ultimately, part of the thing is about, it's all about memories, right? And there's the character named Joy wants all of the memories to be good memories. And so they come out as these like glowing golden balls that are like these positive memories. Mm -hmm. And then sadness, the whole movie is kind of just like a drag and kind of like a pain in the ass and like, ah, sadness. And and we want to keep sadness away from being, we don't want her to have any sad memories, right? And ultimately at the end, the most powerful memory that the main character Riley has that makes her decide that she wants to like stay with her family is one that is equal parts happy and sad because it's a memory of when she missed <clears throat> the game winning goal in a hockey game and she was super sad about it and then her whole team rallied around her and said how much they loved her and appreciated her and so on and so forth and then hey we're recording a podcast you want to say hi what's up mr hodges mr hodges is in the house everybody greetings whoa, whoa. all this will be listened to by the millions of uh, followers of Cam's podcast. Which is titled? Attic Antics. Attic Antics. It's a great name. It's good stuff. It's engaging. You. I yeah. appreciate it. Um, so, so I was just, real quick. Uh, we're talking about Pixar movies, and I was just talking about the movie Inside Out. And I was mm-hmm. talking about how the kind of most epic moment of that movie was how... Uh, we learn that the most powerful memory that Riley has is one that's both happy and sad because the whole time Joy's trying to keep sadness away from destroying or ruining or polluting her memories. And if she missed the game winning goal of a hockey game and it was really sad, but then if you like fast forward, it's one of the happiest moments in her life because her team rallies around her, her parents rally around her and everybody says, we still love you anyway. We still support you, all this other stuff. And so that's kind of the thing is, is the lesson is in order to be fully human, we can't just limit ourselves to having one emotion and we're capable of feeling multiple emotion, emotions at the same time. So I walked away from that movie feeling really like, like it really changed the way I feel and think about things. And soon after that, a buddy, I was talking to a buddy of mine who's wife is from the east coast and every summer they go to the east coast and go to the jersey shore and like the whole family's there and they have a great time and they were getting ready to go and he got a call from his mom that said his grandma was really sick and probably didn't have much time longer so i was talking to him and he says i don't know how to feel right now i feel so weird because i'm super happy about and excited about this trip but i feel guilty i feel like i shouldn't allow, be allowed to feel that way because of what's going on with my grandma and i said this is going to sound so stupid but go watch the movie Inside Out. Like, I'm telling you to go watch this children's movie, but I'm like, it's so powerful. Because fundamentally what the message of that movie is, you as a human can feel both of those things at the same time. You can be happy about the trip and sad about your grandma at the same time. You don't have to only have one emotion. You can't feel guilty about being excited about something that's going on in your life because you're sad about your grandma. Or you don't have to shut up how sad you are about your grandma in order to be happy. As humans, in order to be fully human, we can feel multiple things at once. And I was like, it's crazy, it's a kid's movie, but go watch it. And he ultimately did, and he called me and he was like, dude, like, it's crazy, we're spot on, and that movie was exactly what I was experiencing at the time, and it really was. And so, this was, uh, Pixar's... Damn. 
some of the movies don't hit that, but some of the movies really do it. I feel like Inside Out is such an incredible movie because I feel like it's a perfect example of how a lot of the movies, even though they're made for kids, fundamentally change the way you think or feel about certain things. Mm-hmm. I feel like that movie could be shown in like college level psychology classes. I feel like Wally could be shown in like college level environmental. Yeah, show it for apes. Yeah, 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 apes. Yeah, nice. I mean, Wally's phenomenal. Every time I see an ant, one of those Amazon vans, I would say, by and large. And by and large, is the company and yep. all that goes across all of the Pixar movies. Yep. That's the one that's taking over the world, which mm-hmm. is exactly what Amazon's doing, right? Yep. That movie is 700 years in the future. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a movie that I feel like is a more accurate depiction of what I think 700 years in the, 700 years in the future will actually look like. Wally's incredible. But again, that one doesn't hit as high on the appealing for children. Right. Kids don't like Wally as much. Because so. it's more meant for adults more I don't exactly agree. I was saying him I don't agree with no, that no I one, Wally no one talks for the first 45 well, minutes and I don't think I, don't, I think Cameron's right I don't necessarily think as an older person that I don't know I, maybe young people do I'm but, just thinking from my own experience when I, when I, when I say hey guys it was my kids six and three you guys want to watch Finding Dory Monsters Inc Toy Story or Wally they never say Wally right or I say here's all of the Pixar movies <laughs> to me it's all interesting right. with I didn't want it. We're going to say goodbye. <clears throat> We're going to say goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening. Hope Mr. you enjoyed. Mr. Oh. Hodges, do you have any uh, final words to sign us out with? Just uh, keep on potting and uh, support Cameron's uh, podcast. Attic Antics, baby. Attic Antics. Coming from the classroom. <laughs>